Thank you for stopping by guys, it's Al here, playing some more Scrap Mechanic. Um, I'm recording this episode right after the last, uh, so I won't be able to have a chance to do any editing or looking at comments in those, just an FYI. Um, I would like to say before I get started with the episode, if you like the episode, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, or just have anything to say, please put them down in the comments below. I will be reading those. Um, if you enjoy the episode, and uh, you enjoy what the channel is doing, like to see more of it, please subscribe, it helps out oh so much. Um, today I wanted to talk about something I've been working on for a while, and I mean a while. Um, I shared it in the episode, but Wander, that little AI I made, um, originally wasn't going to have that large face on him. If I can find him, or find a version of him. Because there's a bunch of them. Doo -doo, you get to look at all the things I've built. Yay. Uh, where is Wander? There's Wander 10. Oh, well, close enough. Uh, it's not Wander 11, but you get the point. Uh, this head on the front of him. Originally, he wasn't going to have this big sensor array. Originally, he's going to have a radar. Um, I'd been working on this for a while, and I had a few concepts... I just recently got it got it to a working system. Um, the first one I had made that is fully working is this one. Um, once I get into range, you should see that move slightly. Um, this one it works. It actually it works works pretty well most of the time. Um, I might have actually skipped. I think this might have been the very, very first. There might be another one after this, but I don't know where it is, and I'm not going to go looking for it now. But the concept of what this is doing is uh, there's actually two of these systems running. Um, one of them at the fast pace, which is this one down here. One of them at a slower pace. Uh, the fast one is meant to see like, things coming quickly at it. The only problem is it's really inaccurate. This one is really accurate, but two downsides is it needs a big timing system to work. And it also uh, doesn't update quickly. So you can see the timing system. Now how this works is there are three of these sensors. So there's that one down there. And these two, which are all linked with AND gates. Uh, these turn on when they see these blocks in front of them. And that one turns on when it sees something in front of it that's not, like, anywhere. Like, not supposed to be there. So, the there's AND gates, so if this one sees this section, and that sees something, then it knows there's something that's likely standing to the side, which would be to the right over there, if you're looking, yeah, over there. And if this one gets triggered at the same time that gets triggered, then there's likely something standing over there. Um, the same thing is happening down here, just at a faster rate. And this is nowhere near perfect. It causes a lot of issues. I keep getting messages. I keep, keep, keep getting messages. So, um, I'm actually going to have to be right back. Okay, and I'm back. What might have seemed like a few seconds for you is actually quite some time for me. Um, hopefully I remember everything I was talking about. Uh, I know I talked about how these work. I don't think I talked about these here. Um, I have to actually remember what system this uses. This uses a flooding... Okay. Okay. I know what's going on here. All right. So when I put this down, you'll notice that this side starts to activate. And if I get it where the sensors are hitting it. So what happens every time uh, one of these sensors here and one of those sensors down there line up and get an AND, depending on which side it senses it on, which is this one, it'll send a flood signal which will go to all these OR gates and turn all of these on. 
these are all set to zero ticks. Um, this isn't perfect, and neither is that one over there. Um, that one over there has gone out of sync, I've just noticed. Which is an issue I'll get to in a little bit. Um, but these will flood, and as long as that one's powered, it'll power these bearings. So the time it takes for these to empty out, um, and every time one of these empties, it'll fill the one in front. So that's how that works. It kind of just flows down the stack every time. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a bit unsure of what I've already talked about and a bit out of it. There we go. Let me actually pick this up because you, you can see it goes out of sync every once in a while. Uh, what that's caused by is because there's motors. These motors end up spinning at a slightly different rate over time which causes um, them to not understand where they are in relation to each other so this one when it picks up the actual machine thinks that it's actually over that something is over there even though it's actually the machine itself that's picking up right now the machine thinks it's facing that way because that over there where the machine is it thinks is left and over there it thinks is right so if I pick this up and set it back down, then I'll be back in sync. Uh, this one, instead of having one signal like that, actually has four there, which means that you have the accuracy of a slower one with the update rate of the faster one with this four-headed system. Um, there, even though I was standing on this side, it thought I was on because it considers this triangular area here to be in front, directly in front, up until about there-ish. It considers to be directly in front of it, so I can stand slightly off the side. This one here, like I said, uses that four system, and instead of having these two separate spinners, they're actually connected in there. Uh, this, if you look at it like this, would be looking at it straight, like straight on. What is at the bottom of the screen is what would be at the bottom of the plate, would be towards the ground. So the top level is looking at the right hand side, while the bottom level, level is looking at the left hand side. This being right, and that being left. Um, and with the faster update rate, even though it's slower, I can use less timers. It works in the same flood system as the last one did. And all of these are the different AND gates for each and every one of these. Each one of these sensors hooks up to it, um, one of these and one of these. One for each left and one for right. And then it floods into the same way and it comes around and it floods. And then as long as that one's on, that one's turning. So that was that. I'm going to get rid of these, and then I'm going to get the test versions. There's a few that came before and after these. Um, they weren't working tests by no means. First came the AI ship. Um, I created this to be a modular AI that I could attach to almost anything. So I thought, well, let's attach it to something big so I can have a giant hover ship. Um, I do have some override controls in this, not very well. So if I hit three, that'll turn on the engines. And the radar is up front. There you can see it. Um, if you look right there to the left of it, the one that's on right now, that is a priority. That basically says if both light right and left are on, then it will prioritize, uh, I think it prioritizes right, I think. You see as it comes up to the tree, it'll actually turn off the forward thrust. Uh, originally I had it turn on the rear thrust, but that caused some issues with flipping. This thing just chugs along and turns slightly as it uh, interacts with stuff. It's nowhere near perfect. After a while, it will go out of sync. You can see it turned there because it didn't want to go up and over that hill. Um, 
and because it's a hovercraft it will often drift into the side of stuff and because it's a giant creation it yeah there's a lot of issues as you can see it's working to some extent and I'm gonna hit this tree and it's probably going to roll so before that can go any worse I'm going to get rid of this it, this was an somewhat of a, su a success but I'll consider it not being a total success uh, after that became this this uses the same system but with one major difference this uses a controller where's the controller the controller is actually down here that rotates that and that at a 360 degree rate instead of using in the engine which is still attached to the back I just didn't bother to remove it this helps prevent it from going out of sync so with this, um, hit one, I have no control, only have that button. Um, the issue with this is it's still not perfect, it doesn't always detect properly, and uh, it'll get caught every once in a while on something. Also I should mention, none of these have detection systems which detect the ground. Uh, Wander had this, but these don't. And the purpose of that is so that um, it doesn't accidentally drive off a cliff. So with these, it doesn't detect whether or not there's actually ground under it, and it could just drive right off of anything. So here, I should detect those rocks, and I will start turning. And you see another issue. Because this does not have forward and rear power, I cannot get up anything. That's not right. Turn, turn, turn. There we go. Um, I did this to help increase the turning radius, but it appears I can't go up hills. And I hit one. And my suspension is glitching out. Yay, that's helpful. AI, you have been a pain in my butt. Let's throw it up here and hopefully not freak out. Come on. Let me go forward. The AI hits and it turns, and because I turned on the rear throat or the rear engines, it doesn't have a decent turning radius, and this is going to jump off a cliff because it doesn't have ground detection. Yay! <laughs> slowly falling so all in all this is still highly experimental it works to some extent and it has its things it does well and it does wrong um, I might not uh, the, the big issue is these can only see out 20 blocks I don't think it's actually 20 blocks it's 20 units it's like there it sees was it doing come back here which means it doesn't always see things, it doesn't always update in time to dodge them. And the big... The... Why are you... The biggest issue I've encountered is when the... Uh, can't think of it one moment. Um, especially like this and the big ship. It has no way to preemptively turn. Because those signals are only so far, it can't turn. It can't turn early, and it has no idea where like dead ends are, and it can't avoid a forest. It just goes in a direction that doesn't have a tree, which could end up causing it to go into forest. Um, I think we're gonna. I think I've rambled on about radar long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. Um, this is the closest thing I've got to a fully working, fully functioning vehicle that uses its own self-driving, other than Wander, which uses a completely different system, la da 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 da. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and the episode here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you liked the video, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions for future videos or just like to say some stuff, please put it down in the comments. Uh, if you like what the channel is doing, you like to see more of it, please subscribe. It helps oh so much. You don't even realize. 
Until next time, this has been Al playing some scrap mechanic and screwing around with radars and AI. Peace. Thank you.